So let's take a look at one very spooky Drukari charge threat that can charge a target 24 inches away and still proceed to slay most normal sized units in the game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought it would be interesting to take a look at a potential Drukari power combo. Games Workshop seriously deciding to give some Drukari melee infantry some teeth again. This one comes from the new Drukari detachment, the Sky Splinter Assault Formation. Kind of fun that they did give them a new and interesting detachment to play with, and one that actually has some pretty meaningful rules. I did do an entire video on this at the time. But it is a detachment that has lots of powerful stratagems for their iconic infantry in transports. It came in the context of Drukari Codex buffs with cheaper things like Raiders, Venoms and Incubi, plus the option for the Archon to lead Incubi and Pain Tokens gaining you an extra AP minus one. All of that coming together in a really quite cheap and deadly assault unit that can move very fast and sweep most targets in the game. Putting that all together, let's see what these murderous space elves have to offer and exactly how much damage they can do. First up, perhaps the most important bit, is the way that the Drukhari can get their squad there. They can do this via the Pounce on the Prey stratagem. You have a squad that you want to make a charge a really long way away, deploy it in a Raider, or maybe a Venom if you wanted a small unit. The Raider or Venom can move 14 inches, so really quite a big move. Disembark 3 inches out the front. Games Workshop's latest FAQ did confirm that you certainly can measure from the very peak of the prow if you want to. And then for one extra command point, you can use Pounce on the Prey allowing the infantry units to do some land raider style shenanigans and charge after disembarking. That would be somewhere between 3 and 12, an average of 7. It does mean that if there's no terrain or anything in the way, you'd be odds on to threaten a charge on anything that's 24 inches away. Even if you did have to skirt a little bit of terrain at some point, that's still going to be a massive threat bubble that the enemy can't be certain of their unit's safety of if they move within that distance of the raider. There's a few different melee infantry that might make sense to do this with, though Incubi do seem like perhaps the most obvious. They dropped down to 15 points each in the latest points update, so 150 points per 10 of these guys. Toughness 3 infantry and power armour, and they fight with the claves or demi-claves. The standard guys getting 3 attacks at strength 4, AP-2 and damage 2. The clave X sergeant can swap that out for 6 attacks with just 1 damage if he'd like to. The damage profile just on its own maybe isn't quite as exciting as it perhaps used to be in the past. Previously they had strength 5 and AP 3 built into them, though it seems that with the buffs you can get now, you can get them back to being very very scary to just about anything that you charge again. For the base damage output, they're pretty good against standard space marines or anything lighter, though they will struggle against anything that they'd be wounding on a 5+. plus. Even a big investment squad of 10 of them only slays around about 1 or 2 terminators, or does around about 4 wounds to most vehicle units. In general, up until this point, that's kind of held them back, as it means they just can't be quite as general purpose problem solvers as they maybe once were. With a recent boost though, you can have them hitting very very scarily indeed. First up, there's the Sky Splinter Assault main rule called Reign of Cruelty. When you disembark from a transport, melee weapons gain the lance ability, so if you charge into combat then you get plus 1 to wound. That pretty much flatly just doubles damage output against anything that you're wounding on a 6, so it's really good against the big tanks, and helps out against the terminators as well. Then to help out against higher save things, you can add in a pain token as well. This one allows reroll hit rolls, and it's also boosted in melee as well now, by improving AP by an additional 1. That means you're going to be hitting with the vast majority of the attacks, They'll all be at AP-3 and plus 1 to wound. Now taking the numbers to be really quite a big chunk against most things in the game. 12 wounds to a land raider or 15 wounds to a gladiator tank just for the detachment buff and a pain token. Finally if you want to make them even more blendy then you can add in an Archon for 75 points. The standard Drukari HQ can now lead his iconic bodyguard once more. He allows you to reroll wound rolls of 1 or when the squad's empowered with a pain token, it allows them to re-roll all wound rolls, and it means that even with strength 4 weapons, if you're getting plus 1 to wound and re-roll anything that wasn't that 5+, plus, you do wound with more attacks than you don't against anything, even mighty land raiders. He also brings a few fun things of his own with his blast pistol, a bunch of extra strength 3 and damage 2 attacks, plus the ruinous stratagem ability, but he definitely does his bit turning the squad's damage output up to 11. Putting that all together, this is the average damage output with an Archon, a Pain Token and the Detachment Rule all in effect. For a squad of the 10 Incubi now, you're looking at 26 Termagants, 20 Standard Space Marines, so crazy overkill against anything in normal power armour, 5 Slain Terminators, 
24 wounds to a gladiator tank or 20 wounds to a lamb raider. For most normal sized vehicles in the game that should have a good chance to kill them outright. You'd be odds on to one round something like a standard Questorus Imperial Knight or a Chaos Knight. Or at least once you've included the Archon's damage output in that, which I haven't actually included in the above calculation. It'd get just a little bit more excessive if you included his extra 5 attacks. With those kind of impressive numbers, it would give you a fairly good chance of one-shotting quite a lot of normal units in the game, even if you only use, say, 5 Incubi plus the Archon. Average rolling wouldn't quite have you kill things like a Lamb Raider or a full squad of 5 Terminators, though you would come kind of close. Overall though, definitely on paper it looks like one of the scarier things that Drew Curry can do with the new detachment. I've seen a couple of people thinking that it might be fun to use the Nightmare Shroud on such a unit. That's a 20 point enhancement that denies Overwatch. And that could be a seriously big deal to Incubi if they get overwatched by the wrong thing. If you did lose a bunch of one wound models then you might well have a serious cut in the damage output of the squad compared with what it should be. I guess it wouldn't be super relevant in every single game they went charging out with that. But just to be able to know that your squad can just walk straight up to something with enormous overwatch and still just charge it no questions asked is pretty intimidating. Otherwise it could be interesting to put other different combinations of units and things. Which is with Lilith Hesperak seems like a really strong option on a budget. 175 points with the same buffs still blends a whole load of things. It just won't do quite as well against things with higher saves and higher wound counts given that they're only damage 1 base. But given Lilith's buffs and her own excessive amount of attacks they really aren't too far behind the Incubi in terms of raw numbers. At least less than you might expect for 175 points versus 225 with the Archon. I guess another option could be to use Drazar to get some damage 3 attacks in there, though his plus 1 to wound would have a bit of overlap with the detachment rule. I guess that means that he could still use that on later rounds though. I guess for issues or downsides, it would leave you with a high value unit that could just get hit back very very hard after they've done their damage. You'd probably need to try and alpha strike something that's really key and kill something that's their points value or greater. Or try and make sure that when you've slain the thing it, they can wind up in a place that's not going to be able just to be super easy for your opponent to take out in return. Maybe in cover or behind line of sight blocking. I guess the dream might be to kill something important and then take up residence in cover where your opponent can't get to you next turn. The 24 inch charge is pretty excellent. They wouldn't really be quite having you charge from one deployment zone to the next. So I guess it would still usually be a second turn charge option if you're going first as the Drew Kari player. And it could be a bit below that maximum if you wind up having to go around terrain quite a bit. Even so though it's a very long charge threat range and if you could have a raider moving up into the midfield behind cover you should have easy charges on lots of important things later on. Finally I guess it does eat some pain tokens and command points which could have other good targets in the sky splinter. This does seem like one of the easiest ways to convert them into damage though. I feel like between the sheer amount of carnage that this can do at quite such a big charge range, I wouldn't be too surprised to see big units of 10 Incubi or Witches go charging out of Raiders in the new detachments. Let me know your thoughts on the little combo down in the comments below though. Have you seen this in action or been planning to use this in the future? Look forward to hearing any insights. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to All Spets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. I'll certainly try and keep up with Games Workshop's news and rumours, and I do like to dig into fun power combos from time to time. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that's linked down in the video description if you'd like to support and help keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.